In order for February 28, 2024, we'll start with a pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, warrant and bills are signed up. Yes. Yep. Uh, approval of the agenda. I move to improve the agenda for February 28th. Seconded. All in favor? Minutes of the last meeting. We should have two weeks, right? Okay. Yeah. We only have yes, we only have one, one. <laughs> for now. Oh, one for now, okay. The 14th, right, yep. Sam? So, yep. So I move to approve the minutes from the February 14th, 2024 meeting. I second it. All in favor? Town Administrator, weekly update. All right. Just a few things here tonight. Look what I got, Tom. Oh, very good. <laughs> so it, is, it looks pink, but it's going to be blue. So they sent us, we just received it via um, FedEx, the good. sample. Um, so we'll go through it and get them an okay um, and have them hopefully in stock by next week. Wonderful. So it just arrived. I kind of like the pink, though, but she did say it'd be blue. Yeah. Okay, not so much. <laughs> Um, next is to um, ask the board for permission to close the clerk's office to regular business unrelated to the election next Tuesday. Certainly if, um, as always, you know, we, we've tried this a couple of times on big elections. As always, if you plead and have a situation that, you know, you absolutely need, we'll sneak you in. But any business that we can prevent at the window so that we can focus on the primary election would be helpful. Absolutely. Can you that? Mm -hmm. Um, we do have um, our schedule put together for the election. I normally just like to run through it with the board. Um, this is a warden. So we have Virginia Shea and Sheila Conway, one Republican, one Democrat, that will run it. it we don't need a moderator at this election. Uh, Check-in table is Don Van Syndrome, Gail Bovere, a Republican and Democrat. Overseeing the ballot box, Jeanette Burse and Nancy Ruma, also Republican and Democrat. We are going to have a town table. Um, this is one of those elections where unenrolled can enroll in parties or just participate. So we always like to have a separate table to assist with voter registration. Bernard Broder will be running that. He is unenrolled. Check-in table will be uh, Estelle Gore and Virginia DeBoer, Republican and Democrat. Overseeing the ballot box, uh, Bevan Corbin and Gary B, we like to call him. When we appointed him last year. Long last name. Call him Gary B. Anyways, Republican and Democrat. What was it? Was somebody going to say it? Frogskovich? And then my uh, town table in the afternoon will be Tammy Krampitz, who is unenrolled. And then we have just one um, Republican and Democratic counter. Anyways, even Keel, just like the state likes, scheduled for all day. Next is uh, notice that nomination papers are going to be available in the clerk's office uh, beginning on... Um, March 4th, uh, March 5th is the day the office is actually open. So March 5th, we have a District 2 Road Commissioner seat. We have two school committee seats, uh, Gardner and Stanton, that are due. And then we have Mr. McGurdy's seat. And then the fifth selection seat uh, will be available. So those papers <coughs> will be available um, 1st of March, and they'll do, be due back to the clerk no later than April 12th. So there's a little bit of time to get that done. So if anybody has questions, um, Come and see me. Next is just FYI that uh, if you haven't seen yet, the road commissioner did officially post the roads effective tomorrow morning, or is it effective tonight? No, it it's was effective tonight. it was effective today. Okay, so effective today, all the roads. When was it posted? posted Come on up here. Mm. I thought he told me yesterday. When did you post it last night? Yeah, I posted them last night, so, so they are effective, effective for... twenty-four hours from the time you post it. So in theory, they could have ran today. Yeah, well, I told everybody they were getting yeah. posted last night. But, but whoever you didn't tell could have ran it today. Yeah, no, everybody, I, they, I don't think there was anybody, but no, they were all the, today, so. Posted officially tonight slash tomorrow. Is that what I'm hearing? No, they're, they're good for tomorrow. They're posted for tom tomorrow. Yeah, they're, the official date day. was today. It was yeah. official today. What time did you post last night? Oh, I don't know, like 5 o'clock. Yeah, so it's 5 o'clock this afternoon. Yeah. It was posted. Yeah. So they are posted. Yeah, but. Perfect. Thank you. 
Uh, next, is we got um, a notice from the Sheriff's Department. So the third and final detail was conducted on February 23rd in the areas of Young's Ridge Road, Goose Pond, Milton Mills, and um, he put Shapley Corner Road. Just saw that. Um, total of seven vehicles. <laughs> I'm going to assume that's a misprint. I'll reach out. A total of seven vehicles were stopped for speeding, one speed summons, and six warnings. Uh, so that wraps up the last authority that you gave me for the last block of them. So um, I know that Mark Roy has been working to tighten up our, our numbers, and over the next week or so, maybe you can revisit that and decide if you want to fund some more. It would be... I don't know how to get this other than sort of announcing it over the airways. Uh, personally, I would love to hear from some citizens as to whether or not they want this to continue or not. It is an added cost, but mm -hmm. we did this based on uh, complaints and concerns expressed by citizens. seems to have worked from my perspective. I don't know how others feel about it, but if people have a point of view out there, please send a note in to, to the town, and we'll consider that whether we continue this or not. Seems like every time they're doing it now, the numbers are getting less and less. Yeah, in yeah. the beginning they so, were quite high, yeah. and they yeah. have gotten yeah. a lot lower. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we take a break for a while and you know come back in the spring or uh, summertime when there's more cars around. I don't know. I guess the question we've that. been switching where they've been. Yes. Yes. So, is it because they're aware? Is it because the roads that they're looking at aren't? Well, they nice? wouldn't know the roads ahead of time. They've mixed them up. So. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like roads that people may not traditionally speed oh, okay. in versus. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'd like to look at that and then... We really ought to see what we got for funds. Yeah. yeah. Before we go too much further. So yeah. I'd say we hold off for just a little bit. I say till spring or early summer and we can decide whether we do something that or not. Yeah. I'm next um, with Tom's advice. I wanted to talk to the board about um, adding something to our website that we would call a tab that we would call community events. Um, we often have things in town. Um, for example, um, Mrs. Minahan does the Super Bowl sliding down on the hill, usually yep. once a year. Um, she has a no-cost Easter egg hunt. Um, the fire department, which they really don't have to ask because they're a department of the town. But how does the town feel about, or how does the select board feel about us adding a community events list where people that, I'm gonna assume it would be, these are free events that we could advertise there for people to see. Um, someone reached out to, to Dan looking to have a couple things added in the newsletter. And before we okay that, we wanted to... Did I hear you say free events? Well, I mean, that would be my... But that would be mine as well. If, if people are raising money off it, I don't know that we ought to be using the town website yeah. for that. Right, because then you get you know, businesses that want to start advertising. But what if yeah. it was, say, like a, a fundraiser? Or, yeah, a fundraiser. Yeah, I mean, set any... I don't know. We should have a policy. So Because yeah. once you start picking and choosing... Um, somebody's not going to be happy. Right. Yeah. I like the emphasis on the community part, so maybe that could be part of like it's something that Happening stays and happened. stays and benefits the community directly. I think it's a great idea just because mm -hmm. so many people do so many things to help each other and community yard sales and stuff like that. that yeah, yeah, yard sales, that might be another thing that sure. people would want. So what other types of um, stipulations would you like to see? We do have two pending and the events are coming up this week. Um, not to put any pressure on you, but they, uh, they're hoping to get advertised um, in this week's newsletter. Yeah, I can tell you what they are real quickly. Um, one is a free movie night. Um, free movie night that's coming up on uh, Friday, March 8th. Um, it looks like... It, there you can buy um, dinner if needed for two dollars, but it's a free movie night in town. Mm -hmm. And the other one is um, looking for wondering if you would consider donating to this year's Easter egg hunt by dropping candy outside in a bin at a particular someone's um, house. Hmm, I think we're interesting. interesting. You know, we really need a policy yeah. because. Uh, That's the request. Yeah, I mean, I, can, I mean, yeah. the first one sounded fine. You know, there's no cost, and, and they come you know, from the same. They, per, they come from the same. Per, I mean, it, it doesn't matter who they come from, but yeah, the same yeah. person organizing both of them. Um, the See, Easter egg hunt is free. She I, just I don't know. takes donations of candy. So you know, the only, the only thing is, is if you go on the website, you know, I know the free thing is great and all that, 
But we you know like Apple Valley used to have their we, Apple Weekend, okay? People have Maple Syrup Weekend and stuff like that. Yeah. That's stuff there where people want to go on your website and see, okay, well, there's Maple Syrup Shacks open and acting, you know? Yeah. So, but they're making a profit on that, though. Yeah. So, but that's something that I think most towns would put in their website. Yeah. Yeah. So, but the problem is, and then it gets confusing because you go from that to, um, like, those, you know, so which is a little confusing, which I don't really, and that one there, I guess, Movie night thing, but the other one I don't know what they're asking for. They're just asking candy for donations. donations of candy. Just candy donations. Just candy donations. She's the doing eggs. a big Easter egg hunt. She's done it here several years. Oh, okay. People just drop off bags of candy so that she can prep for the event. Yeah. Okay. Fill yeah. all the eggs. Yeah, and it's gonna have a location and everything where they have yeah. to go. Okay. I was just the way it was right off. Sorry, I, yeah, I was trying not to give anyone. No. Give it away. Names. Okay. I guess. I guess. Uh, you know, we ought to. I guess I'm fine with them, personally, um, as a temporary measure. We need a policy. Yeah. Okay. And so as long as everyone understands that we're doing this just to sort of get it going and not burden it with too much rules, too right. many rules, but we're going to need a policy, and that may cause us to limit this in some way, okay. put some criteria in the future. So um, you, know, you may see something that happens now that we would never happen, let happen again. And so it's just, you know. So you know. the idea is that similar to this that creator will we'll need to create the PDF and send it to us all ready to go. We're not spending yeah. any yeah. time or energy on it. We're just going to upload this document yeah. and send it. Yeah, you know, cause I, I really think that some of the, uh, you know, you take the campground, the orchard up here, uh, what's yeah. that one there, Cody's Orchard there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, the Goat they have Hill. events oh, yeah. up there, Goat yeah. Hill. Yeah. Um, I think it's great to have you know, Even know. Iron Tails, oh, Willies, yeah. whatever, yeah. all these, you know, if there's events, we just got to figure out how we're going to do it and make it right so it doesn't get sketchy on us. Yeah. So, And we'll put something under the community um, the community tab very clearly saying that these towns are, these, you know, anything listed on this page is not supported or promoted by the town of Acton. Yeah. Yeah. You know, some sort of, yeah. so they yeah. know what's going Yeah, a little disclaimer. Yeah. Just okay. Because, you know, I mean, when somebody else comes down, we'll I can start with something. Yeah. look at all this stuff we can do. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, that's all. Oh, and a reminder that... Um, Next Wednesday, we're having a public hearing for our flood plain ordinance and our mooring ordinance, um, which our code officer will be present to present the flood plain and the board will present the mooring. Nice. Okay. And then Tom. <laughs> That's all I have for this week. Okay, Department of Community Chair updates. Any? I got a list there. Oh, you do. You're right. Do. Board enforcement. Zoning questions. So last week, um, and you have your handy dandy ordinance in front of you. Uh, yeah. Last week, you had a question on. Thank you. Earth moving or something? Yeah. No. Oh. If you're interested, it's on page 23. Um, I'm hoping a little later in the agenda you're going to make a recommendation on it, but it's on page 23. So, what I just provided you was a part of the body of the ordinance. Um, that actually was amended last year by um, the vote of the townspeople. Um, and it actually reads off, um, I'll read it for you, um, for 5.9.2 uh, mineral extraction industry. Um, under permitted required, there is an exception, which is exception one, uh, the removal or transfer of less than 1,000 cubic yards of material fr from or onto any lot of 12 months period as permitted in the land use chart. Now, anything over 1,000 cubic yards is where it goes into conditional use. Now, if you go down, I also asterisked a couple things that it makes it is exempt from the conditional use, which is construction, uh, the removal or transfer of materials incidental to construction, alteration, or repair of building, or, or in the grading or in landscaping incidental thereto. So, like I said when I met last time, this was more of housekeeping. And because the land use chart was a separate part of the ordinance, not the body, I was putting it in as an article. Um, and as written in the body, it's pretty much saying that anything over 1,000 cubic yards or over is a conditional use. It was 10,000 cubic yards. Is there, a, is there a time frame on this exception for construction and, you know, under... As long as there's a building permit going, and the building permit goes for two years, and then you can come in. If you, if you exceed the two years, you come in 30 days prior, get an extension. Um, it goes with that. It goes with that, the, kil the construction uh, permit. So it's only permit. associated with the building permit? Yeah, it would be construction. These exceptions look like it's broader than that. Am I misreading uh, it? Well, 
well, incidental to construction. Oh, okay. Uh, so, all right. Incidental to construction, alteration, or repair of a building, or in the grading and landscaping incidental there too. So, I, um, so, so in theory, ahead. if you want to move more than a thousand yards, you can go get yourself a building permit. That's where well, we're going. You want. People have to understand that a thousand cubic yards is about seventy-five triaxle dump trucks. Yeah. That's a lot of material. I can move. I can move two thousand yards in a day. I get that, but that's a lot of material, Dave. Yeah, and so that's why in, it's not a lot of material. Well, uh, Shapley a lot of material. is 150 cubic yards, yeah. and then it's a conditional use. Yeah, 150 or 50. 150. 150. Yeah. So, um, no, I, I think I think at some point, what I'm saying is, with the idea of getting to build a permit, that's fine. I think we we at some point we're gonna have to put a time limit on that because I mean at some point that might get um, abused. Yeah, right now it's just a thousand yards. It's good for one year. Then next year comes over, 365 days, you're good another thousand yards. That's how it kind of, it's how it's written. No, and I understand that. I just, I look at this and I, I'm like, okay, well, you know, if I'm going to go grade my backyard out, you know, and, and you can. Someone's going to say that, well, you move more than a thousand yards. Who's going to tell me I move more than a thousand yards? Mm. I don't know anybody in this room qualified to do it. There isn't. So I'm not even qualified to tell you what a thousand yards look like. Tell you what it looks like. So uh, uh, under B, uh, do, do do these exceptions, would they permit someone to haul material off? It's Yeah, so it's the removal or transfer yeah. of material. So it's so uh, bringing it in or removing it. So someone could move more than a thousand yards under B. If, if it's a construction site, yes. It's a construction yeah. it's a pretty site. Have, a it's a pretty decent and size construction site. permits only site. last for two years? Um, yeah, and you come in if you need more time and get an extension. Well, okay. Um, um, I don't know. If, does that go on at all? No, I've never, no. You, no. You're not aware of any situation? No. So I guess that's something for the planning board to think about if there, if there are concerns, but that's their issue. Yeah, no, and, and like I said, this is more of housekeeping. It wasn't, okay. there was no big changes to anything. It was... So. No, I and, I and I apologize. I just I That's I think the problem is is what we voted in last year. I didn't agree with, mm -hmm. and I don't agree with this either. So just because I don't agree with it doesn't mean it's not right. So um, <laughs> okay. So this is nothing personal or anything. I just no, I know I get it. It's it's, you know, it's, it's well, it's kind of your uh, industry. So you know, well, the, the issues that we've been having, a lot of it was shoreland zone. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can understand. That's mm -hmm. right on the lake. Da 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 da. Yeah. Um, but for years and years, I acted. If somebody had a pit down the street, you can haul ten thousand dollars, ten thousand yards out of it, which nobody ever could took track of it anyways. But um, you can haul ten thousand yards, and that's how the people paid their taxes. You know, well, it was still and, supposed and to be ten thousand cubic yards with a building permit. With a building was, permit, with a building permit, ten thousand yards a year because we were allowed before, before Ken Paul and all this right. happened. Uh, even when Ken Paul was here, we were allowed to haul 10,000 yards a year off our property, mm -hmm. okay, without having to go do, you know, and all without this Without a stuff. permit, conditional without a permit. permit. Without a conditional okay. use then permit. One and year, was... Then one year, and I remember this, being in the, in the back row of town meeting, and they were voting on that 10,000 yards, and he dropped it to 1,000, and one of the ladies that were on that plan board goes, that ain't right, and he got voted in. That was a misprint on the paper at that point in time. Yeah. That's what we believed, and the lady on that committee mm -hmm. thought it was a misprint, and that's what happened. And it's just kind of rolled from there on out. But the planning board has obviously uh, taken this matter on yeah. and passed on it. So Yeah, I mean, and like I said, it was voted on last year and, and approved. Right. So. Right. Yep. Thanks for explaining it. Thank you. Um, who do we got next here? APAP. Mr. So Mike Corey is here. He's going to give us a rundown of the new system that looks like we're that trying live. That's the light. Hmm. I see the light is on. Oh, it's on the camera. That's off the shot. I just had to move it. Um, <clears throat> we established, um, we, we've been working on this for a couple months now trying to implement a more efficient way to cover these meetings, get them streaming immediately, get them on the um, internet for consumption as soon as possible. Um, so we had town hall streams here the other day, um, working with them directly to set up this infrastructure. And um, it's quite simple. You simply turn the switch on in the back, 
to on. In about 30 seconds, the camera will come on. And um, is a delay. There, yeah, there's a slight delay to Does power. That light up. indicate it's on. Yep. The, the red light. Mm -hmm. And where's the switch? Is it in the room or outside the room? It's right above the um, sign on the studio. Oh, okay. All right. It's just a toggle switch yep. on and off. Fine. Um, and we are testing it tonight um, to make sure it's working and functioning. And I'm looking at myself right now on my phone from the broadcast. Um, you can go to act. Uh, you can go to townhallstreams.com, and Acton is the first client based on alphabetized um, clientele. And you can pick pull this meeting up right now. So you're watching us right now. If you go to it on your phone, make sure you turn your volume down. Um, Are you gonna you gonna have Dan put a direct link on the town site though, right? So they don't have to go to the other place. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, there'll be there will be a link on the website. Um, we're gonna continue to archive um, locally and on YouTube. Yeah, you want to turn the volume down, you'll cause feedback on the yeah, microphones. Yeah, I, I, I did. I, okay. I shut it off. Um, but yeah, we're op operating, we're operation right now, and um, we're testing it. And <coughs> I'll be marking out the floor <coughs> for the podium for um, public speaking, so it's in the shot. Um, but it looks good. It sounds good. And it. I'm getting there. Is that the only red light and that faces this way? Mm-hmm. That's it. Oh, yeah. Boy, that's clear as a bell. Um, so Mike has worked, been working hard on a document that I've asked him to put together for the department heads and committees. Um, so we'll send that around mm -hmm. prior to their meetings and make sure everybody understands. We'll inform when them. Filming and right. when they're not. Yeah, you and, said that they the, have to. Uh, be a delay. They have to still schedule and the audio. Meetings, right. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> yes. So the process is the meetings are scheduled on the calendar. They're scheduled on the town hall streams, the back end of their system. So when you turn the switch on, it goes to their system and they're programmed and ready to capture the video feed. Um, and if you're meeting, ex you, if you need to have an, uh, an executive session or you need a break, you turn the switch off, the live feed is disabled. And then <clears throat> when you're done executive session, your break, you come back, turn the switch back on and everything just um, continues playing from um, where you left off. So what happens if you schedule a meeting for three hours and we go to three and a half hours <clears throat> without turning it off straight, you know, no executive sessions? Will it continue to run live over the three hours? As long as you've turned that switch on, um, the recording will continue to happen here locally. After the three hours, it will cut off um, on the stream, <laughs> um, but we can pull that video footage back off the camera and then add it to the um, end of the video once so, it's complete. So you're scheduling them with the town hall, right? I'm scheduling them on my end, you schedule them on theirs. So are we looking for department and committees to start giving us an idea or are you just gonna well, go the, longer? Yeah, in the instructions, it's, it specifically says that meetings by default will be set to a three hour window. Um, yeah. If they need to extend that or, um, well they can, it doesn't matter if they decrease it, they just turn the switch off. But if they need to extend it, they just inform uh, APAT at actinmain.org and um, we can essentially um, increase it, increase the time limit at that moment um, if I get notified in time, or we can do it after the fact and add it to the video when it's complete. The worst that's going to happen is the live is going to stop at three hours. Right. Shutting the switch off during that three hours doesn't extend that. No, the, well, shutting the switch off will turn the whole thing just turns down. It on. Right. But if we came back out and we went beyond the three hours, Shutting the switch off doesn't give you a break in the three hours. It doesn't extend it's, it. No, no. It's, it's a three hour, hour the window. Three hour is, clock based yeah. on the window. Like yeah. our meeting, the, the meeting tonight was set at uh, six o'clock, yeah. and the end window is six nine to nine, and that's it. Right. Okay. So how are we training department heads and or committee chairs and to do this? It's a one pager. I mean, it's, so you've written up a, a, yeah. a an instruction. It's got a picture of the switch off is off, and there's no light on is on, and there's a red light. And okay. some basic instructions on scheduling and if you need to extend the video, uh, the event, or if you run into an issue, just contact um, APAT or Jennifer um, and we'll, we'll try to take, fix it. We need some kind of a sign or something put up that says when recording. When light is on, watch what you say. Yeah, but something yeah. on that idea. But I mean, like right now you've got a camera sitting there, you know, we've got camera people and it's Everyone in the audience knows that it's being recorded. Right. But with the little camera up there in the ceiling and the little red light, a, 
You know, we just put a little notice on the wall. Mm, here you should said, have, you know, all have something. official town meetings or you know yeah. committee meetings are being recorded. Yeah. Just Isn't there like one that. that says that there's security cameras on premise? Anyway? Yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I'm just okay. So you got that that covers it. But but and just so I understand awesome. it too. So if somebody inadvertently turns that on and a meeting is not scheduled, it will record locally locally to an SD without a volume. Right. With no right. broadcast, it's just locally on the on the. Okay. the without camera. volume, you said. Right, because uh, the mics have to be turned. Don't the mics have to be turned no, on separately? I'll, no, the, there will be a there will be a static microphone installed once um, it comes in, and um, there will be no setup. You just turn the. These switch. will be gone. Yes. Okay. There'll be a so mic. Any, there'll be a ceiling mic, and it'll be run to the back of the. So anytime the switch is turned on, the mic's live. Yeah, but everything will be to the camera. Yeah, it will be. It'll be a closed circuit yeah. recorded footage. You said it's recorded to an SD card. Who has that access to that card? Uh, myself in town hall streams. Nick heads here in. The it's, in that, it's in that thing. Oh, it's in the okay. camera. Yeah. Okay. It's all um, wow. wireless, you know, network accessible. Thanks for taking cool. this on and doing this. I think it's a big improvement yeah. for the yeah. town. <clears throat> this work. Right. So, when are you hoping to have all meetings live and? So I mean, were you still shooting for March first, like you indicated? Yeah, that's oh. Friday. Well, you got, yeah, but you got to wait for the uh, things to come in, right? The microphones. Oh, that's true. We do have to wait for the microphones. When they come in? That um, one, um, once the order gets processed, it should take three days. Oh, okay. So we got you got to. He did send me an order yesterday. It's on my list. We'll get it done this week. Right. So it may not be next week. Right? No, might it might be first week. Okay. Cool. Appreciate it. Yeah, All thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Rec director, Sam, come on up. Hey. Hello. Hello. Um, Sam, Acton Rec director. I am coming to you guys tonight basically to um, finalize what our board has come to the conclusion of. Our baseball seasons aren't as prominent as they used to be a um, long time ago. They've been steadily shrinking. The kids haven't been given the proper opportunity of what they could be doing um, so that when they get to high school and even middle school, they're not even prepared for what's coming. So we have decided at our last meeting, um, there was four board members present. All four of them unanimously agreed on um, only keeping in-house pre-KK for T-ball and first and second for coaches pitch and sending third grade through sixth grade to Sanford. Um, and with doing so, they also wanted to, um, we also wanted to see about using the money that we had set aside for the field drag and then going into the uniform money if we needed that as well to offset. Because we normally charge $20 for a kid to play and now this is gonna be $105 for a kid to play that some parents might not be expecting. So if we can Cover how that. much do you have? We'll break that down again. Well, how much? So for uniforms, we had 1,500 set aside. For the drag, we had 1,700 set aside, giving us a total of 3,200. So theoretically, it could cover up to 37 kids. So now you don't need a drag or uniforms. No, because the other thought is, is um, our board would like to basically just finish grassing in our baseball field that we have and make it so that we have extended soccer field over there. Um, so, so if there's a subsidy, will every uh, family get the subsidy or just certain families? Everybody in Acton. Everyone in Acton. And so how much will that subsidy be? Uh, it's $85 a kid. How much? 85 a kid. Are you giving 85 a kid? Oh, no, so. Subsidy would be 20. Oh, $20. $20. Okay. Oh, sorry. That's what sorry. I thought you said. So yeah. basically the, the parents would go online. We'd end up getting a coupon code because this was the other thing of wanting to get it done sooner rather than later. Signups end on Friday. Um, thankfully, with Sanford, they can go online and they can sign up. Um, but they would create a code for us, a coupon code, so that when the parent would enroll their child, as long as it is an Acton child, um, they would enter the coupon code and they, they would pay $20. And at the end of it, they would give us the bill of how many kids ended up signing up. I'm not expecting to come anywhere near that 37 kids. So the town would pay $20 per child? No, the town would pay 85 per child. Yeah, do, David, it's 85 per I child. Think so. The, they they would pay the twenty. The, the families would pay the twenty, like they normally okay. pay. Okay. Well, because what you said was twenty originally, and then I did the math came over. Yeah, okay. you originally said twenty per person. Yeah. They would. I said they would pay twenty. Yeah. Exactly. 
Yeah, so the parents are paying the 20. Oh, I thought we're we were paying the 20. No, 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 no. no, no, no. Sam, okay. it, it would be really helpful if in the future, when you have something like this, you could put it in writing so we know exactly what it is we're talking about here. Because I did, it was in the email that I've sent twice. And it had all the budget numbers in there? It had um, all about how many kids we have, how much we would have to pay per kid, had all that breakdown. It didn't. Um, it didn't say. Oh, I did have to ask some questions about how many kids we estimated. Right, I asked about have. the budget and stuff, but it didn't have the breakdown like to that extent. Okay. Okay. So what happens? So. Stands. So your pre so pre K to two, what happens? So you don't need uniforms for them at all. We would just use the uniforms that we currently have. It's all going to be in-house stuff um, because we aren't league sanctioned. We aren't big enough to become league sanctioned, and it's how, really how much is the swimming? Because we pay twenty dollars per person for swimming, right? Forty-five, I believe. So you're paying forty-five now for swimming, and they're paying twenty. And they're paying forty-five. It's a fifty-fifty. So why wouldn't we do that with? Eighty-five yes. feels like a lot. To it's just it. where it's they're they're given three days notice. Well, that's, that's not that's not our fault. That's no, you guys' fault for that. Um, this should have been brought up weeks ago. We know the baseball mm -hmm. season was coming, and I think we mm -hmm. did discuss that at a lot. One of the means that I was there that this is something that when baseball comes, we have to be on top of this. Mm -hmm. And yeah. doing three days ahead yeah. is not on top of it. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of putting a spot here. But uh, I have no no issue. I would think doing fifty fifty, it, but. I do disagree. I, you said something about getting rid of the, the base, the, the ball. So, so what we had talked about is we would just use um, the field over at the middle school. Um, we made sure that it was okay to actually use that field for pre-K and yeah, for but a second. At the same time, we have a rec field for a reason. This is for rec activities. If it's a school activity, fine. I have no problem with that. But, you know, that field was built with that there for a reason we still have little kids playing t-ball and stuff on that field right well, to, to yeah, give an idea four three what's wrong with the field so to give an idea this this past year yeah. we weren't able to use that for maybe half the season because it was always too wet because that one side of the field caves down and always going from third down to home is always full of water the home why uh, is it like that it's just the way the field is well i i know how the field is i i, <laughs> I redid that ball field once before because it, it needs to be worked, it needs material put in there. It needs to be but brought that, up to grade. That was so kind of our. We don't discontinue it because as a water pocket, we fix it. No, but that and, was kind of our our but thought. But if you get rid of it, then you'll never get it back. Right. Okay? That was kind and of our. You still have t-ball. You have mm -hmm. first, second, third, fourth still playing. <clears throat> I don't want to depend on the school and have to worry about that is, later is on down Will the road. Is Will still here? Yeah. No. yeah. Will. Would it be appropriate to ask Will to take a look at the field and see what it would cost to deal with this drainage issue? Well, I mean, whatever, it's, it don't matter to me, but I mean, why not have more, to do it? It's more so looking at the middle school level, we don't even have enough kids interested in middle school bas uh, baseball. That's why we're not even doing a middle school team this year. Yeah, no, I think they're more con they was I, concerned more about the use of the rec field. Yeah. Oh, I know, I know. As opposed to the school field. It, it, I, it, if, this, if the field if isn't do that playable. We're putting a parking lot up there. Yeah, yeah, if I it isn't playable. Put it, all down there. <laughs> it isn't playable. So, David, are you thinking that they, she might still need the drag since K through 2 is going to stay up there? Is that your concern that she's oh, spending? What do, you, what do you buy for a drag? Well, no, she's last year she budgeted for a drag. Yeah, I know, but we never had one before. No, so we had budgeted one to actually else. keep the, right. the yeah. field at bay instead of having to go through every couple of years and well, really pull be, out every... So we done every year anyway. Yeah. And every year there should be been money put aside to buy a couple loads of infield mix, you know, or, or every other year at least. But there's been no infield mix put in it since I did it. Yeah. And that was probably 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So that's why there's subtle spots because it was done 10 years ago. I know me and my husband have gone over, done a bunch of work. You've done yeah, a bunch but, of work. But so. you, raking it out is not doing a bunch oh, of no, work. Oh, no, this was... We... You've got to replace the dirt that's yeah, there, no. you know. And, and, yeah, and, the point is we got a field. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we ought to make sure it's suitable to play on. And if yeah. it isn't, we need to know about that so we can take action to fix it. Not not sort of abandon it and send people down to the middle school. And last that year, doesn't make sense to me. Last year she presented because of the issues she was having. That's why she asked the board to put a drag in the budget yes. last year. But now what she wants to do is take the drag money to offset the Stanford. Mm -hmm. So now we don't need the drag for the little ones. You, don't, you probably didn't need the drag in the first okay, place leave. because it's always gotten by. Mm -hmm. with what we've had so I, I can understand getting away with the drag because it's not a necessity um, uh, and, and of course any time that needs to be done just all they have to do is call me I'll bring my power rake and take care of it in a couple hours okay but you can only take care of so much until you can put material to have it. good material down okay there. you know it's like grading a road you can't just grade it forever it's no. eventually gonna need gravel right. so but um, I, I have no issue with getting rid of the drag not getting the drag this year 
But you're talking 37 kids, you, and you just said probably nowhere near that number? No, and that was using both the money for uniforms and for the drag money. So the uniforms, I, that, you, are you going to take all the money from the uniforms? That, that, those uniforms included the younger kids too, right? Yeah, we have some. If we're going to continue on and we don't need all of the money, the, basically the mindset was have the option to use it if we need it. Hope not to, per se. So at, at 3200 which is a combination of the drags and the uniform, if you split the cost 50-50 like you do for swimming, It'd be a lot so less. You're, not, you're not picking one over the other. Yeah, I think that would be. That's 5250 <laughs> per child. So 5250 divided by the 3200 you could sponsor up to 61 kids. Yep. You just said 37 at most. Well, that was off so at 85. Would work, and if we needed uniforms for the little, you could still do that. Yeah, I think that would probably be more realistic. I, I don't, you think that's going to be an issue with the parents? That I'm not sure of. I'm hoping not. Um, again, it's going to be only Acton kids. How many kids did we have last year that wanted to play baseball? So last year, what I did is I took the numbers from third through sixth that we had. Um, in 2022, we had nine kids. Uh, last year, we nine in that age gap. Um, last year, we had 16, so it was growing. And this year, if I take the numbers from what was left at, at second grade up through fifth grade, because those would be now our three through we would have 22. So that's was, if all of them were going to be there, and that still doesn't give us enough for two teams for each grade group. So you just gave me a number of 22, right? Mm -hmm. What are we going to up with 36? We were trying, I was She's just giving an idea of a maximum. Oh, just, like, yeah, well, that, that's, that's quite a bit. Yeah, worst case scenario. Yeah, yeah, yeah worst case scenario, we have this. So that <laughs> so, basically, we shouldn't have to worry about hitting that, is what I was. Okay, well, yeah, well, I'm just, you know, be, you know we're, we're taking money from one line items there, and Unfortunately, I know you're, you have to inflate some, but that, you know, you're talking 12 kids extra that you think might be playing, which probably don't exist. No, it's taking it. So by doing the number that I did, I grabbed the numbers that were from the grade below that would be moving up to this grade. Yeah. Okay. And then knowing we also have a bunch of new kids in town. Okay. okay. Sort of a change of subject. Mm -hmm. To all the kids who want to play, are they guaranteed to play when they go to Sanford? That's what we were trying to make sure. So, I for example, when important. they when they come here, they know that it's the twenty dollars, and then they've got the max of the fifty dollars per no, family. Is Sanford going to accept all the kids that come? Or do Sanford they, do will they accept they as them? long as they sign up by Friday. Yeah, Sanford, that's fine. But, which I want to, if we get an answer, I'll post it tonight. No, we're talking about whether or not they're actually going to make a team. Right. That's right. Yeah. right. Yes, yeah. that's all. So, I, I just want to make sure they can get on a team. Yeah. Yes, they will be guaranteed. If the board keeps it 50-50 to match the swimming and you have any issues, we say this all the time, if you have any issues that a parent can't pay the 52-50, they, they make mention that they can only pay the 20, then you come see me and my neighbors helping neighbors will fund it. We've done that in the past, but at least it keeps it yeah. the same as other sports. Okay. Yeah. Send them my way. We won't ask any questions. We'll throw in the 32.50. Perfect. I do. I just random question. Looking at the numbers that you gave us, it seems like it's gotten, you know, only a few students from 16 to 22 and from six, 16 from nine. Do you think that in the future it could? If we kept the rate it was, so it's going to continue to grow as a program. And do you think that by putting students over in Sanford, it's now cut out that possibility of having our own program? In my mind, the more we've thought about it and the more we've met about it with as a board, um, we've kind of just come to the conclusion that we don't think baseball is going to be that broad of a sport for us anymore because the kids have such an opportunity over at Sanford. At Sanford. Plus, we're also not league sanctioned. And it's one of those to, problem. yeah, to, if you're not league sanctioned, we can play other towns, but that's only if those other towns want to play us. And by that, mm -hmm. I mean, they're willing to go in and put all this paperwork in with the boards and everything and make sure that they can get it, dates. It's a huge yeah. advantage for them to go down and play the baseball at a younger age. Oh, and, yeah, I you know, it's like my boys, they played soccer at a younger, you know, we put yeah. them, you know, they did a Pee Wee thing here for a little while. We coached and all that, but then we got them down there. Of course, you know, you got to make that transition from, um, six, fifth, sixth, seventh, and then going to high school, yeah. you know, you, you've got that four years of, tr of that transition instead of making that transition as a freshman. Yeah, plus, they're going to make they're going to make friends yeah. there. Yeah, they're going to meet other kids I, in Sanford. Could we just find other sports go this way as well? Huh? Could we find other sports go this way as well? I don't think so. Our soccer program and our basketball program are absolutely crazy right now. Um, our the cheerleading program, program is growing. Wouldn't work. It, I don't think it would work for acting kids to do that. No, I don't. That, that's a whole different. That would be the Nason there. Center. That's yeah. not even Sanford itself. Okay. Yeah, that would um, be uh, AAU yeah. or whatever they call it. Yep. And we've we actually 
going from our younger kids all the way up through our school system here in town those numbers are actually really good to give us teams uh, yeah we don't want to we don't want, we want to keep whatever sports we can going yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And we weren't right. in that yeah we don't want to drift in the wrong direction but if everything and the other sports are fine then we're, you know, yeah. we're, we're good so uh, are we making a decision here yeah i think the the 50 15 then let them yeah. know if they do have difficulties to reach out and okay. so it's it's 50 dollars is it 52 50 52 50 52 okay <laughs> perfect <laughs> Sounds good to me. I'm fine with that. I'll post that out tonight. That way they can get jumped on it. Um, and then I also wanted to make you guys aware that the cheerleading, the competition group, has just signed up. We are going to be going to three competitions. Um, we've got March 9th in Kennebunk, March 23rd in Turner, and March 30th in Scarborough. Nice. Cool. Great. Nice. And just awesome. for a quick clarification, because I know you asked this. So competitive cheer, the parents buy their own uniforms parents bought their own uniforms regular cheering that you're still doing regular cheering yep. those are the ones that they borrow and give back yes okay and so we've got a lot that. that we're going through i've i haven't been able to place an order for the regular cheer because everything was on such back order but i need to replace a bunch of the uniforms that we have because they had so much white on them that they are all stained and kind of gross looking so maybe a darker color for the young I'm, <laughs> yeah i'm looking for trying to do they had one style that comes in like this and just right here is white and here is blue I'd like to do that so that it doesn't have so I much. Just want, there's been some some questions and comments on Facebook, so yeah, because so competition, we see the budget, so we want to make sure that yeah, it's being competition spent cheer. The the parents, I mean, they only pay twenty dollars to to compete, so the uniform themselves and the shoes and that all come from the parents taking care of Look it. Look at the answer. So competitive cheer is like a travel cheer, and the yeah. other ones are just for here. Yes. Right. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. Thank you. Fifty-two fifty. Thanks. Thank you. Fifty-two. Please uh, on update, Tom. Um, had an opportunity to spend some time on the school budget this week. Um, it met with uh, some representatives from the school. That I think was a good meeting. Um, that's it. Okay. Ed. Nothing. Wait, wait. Dan. I just attended the uh, end of basketball and chair celebration last night. That was that. I actually attended a basketball game the other night. A friend of ours, their children play. It was, it's like going, you know, going back in time. You know, <laughs> ain't done that in a while, but that was interesting. Good time. Um, okay, uh, me. I have no no update. So we are going to go down to old business, twenty four twenty five budget continuation. All right. So you have your warrant in front of you. Yep. We are going to, we're going to go to page 22. All right. Just highlight a couple of changes and hopefully get a couple of votes out of you and get this ready to go. So Article 8 is the article that uh, Mr. Sivany just <coughs> clarified. So unless you have any questions, hoping for a motion on that one. Do we hear a motion? I'm, I'll make a motion to adopt or to recommend adoption of Article 8 as written. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Are we going to deal with Article 7? No, not until after the public hearing. So we, I, I noticed some people here from the Lake of so the Lakes. I don't, they may want to. Is that why you folks are here, dealing with mooring? It would this be an appropriate time for them to comment on that or no? I, mean, I don't. The public hearing. We got a public right. hearing coming up. I mean, I mean, unless you really want to. <laughs> I mean, uh, here. I mean, they, they will be open to changes next week too. They can, the document can still be changed next week, and the board has intentionally skipped it because they want to hear from you. Yeah, we're just hoping to get a, a everybody's opinion all at once instead of you know a little bit of if, if you don't mind. So, okay. That's fine. All right. I just I could see who was here. And I lost my, all right. So, okay, we did that one. We're going to jump to page 28. Some of these they did last week. So those are all the school articles. Article 34. <clears throat> so we had a lot of conversation on this one last year. Uh, last year, last week. It felt like so long ago. Um, after speaking with Mark Roy, the recommendation is to see if the town will vote to authorize the select board to make application for and execute any documents related to grants or donations, to accept any grants or donations or fees appropriate and appropriate such funds to their designated use so long as they do not require matching funds or encumber the town in any way. The treasurer shall be notified of grant applications and a copy shall be kept on file in the treasurer's office. Period. The rest is getting struck out. All the MEMA FEMA, it is a grant. You're really saying the same thing twice? Yep. Not necessary. Motion? 
Make a motion to recommend adoption of Article 34 as written. Seconded. All in favor? All right. Article 35 we left out last week um, solely because we weren't going to, we weren't sure if there was something was going to happen with that FEMA reserve, but it doesn't affect 35 at all, which is to see if the town will vote to carry forward the following fund balances and allow balances to be appropriated to the designated department. APAT, cemetery, earn paid leave, forestry and conservation, forestry reserves, LRAP, also to authorize the town to carry forward but not appropriate the following articles. Ambulance, capital improvement, dam capital improvement, fire department capital improvement, rec capital improvement, and ooh, ARPA funds should be scratched, right? Yes. Yeah, that should be gone because that's zeroed out. Right. So I'm still going to get a motion from me and get that. Well, we're going to make a motion. As amended. Yeah. As, as amended, amended yep. No. Make a motion to to recommend uh, passage of Article 35 uh, as written and amended. Second. All in favor? So I'm going to do as written with that removal, so I don't have to write amended in the Removal of the American Rescue, Rescue Plan Act. Act. I'm sorry. Any way you want. Okay. Thanks, Tom. All right, Article 36. Okay. Uh, this was also rewritten with uh, Mark Roy to see if the town will vote to transfer the unexpected balance of the FEMA Emergency Disaster Reserve Fund into the unassigned fund balance and terminate the fund. This is money that's been in the years from previous emergencies that has already been spent, should have been accounted a different way, which Tom can give you the detail on. He's got a plan going forward, but essentially we do not need this reserve anymore. Should I speak to that now? Or Absolutely. No Great. Um, uh, the way the process works, as I understand it, is if we think we're going to have, if we feel we've had an emergency that would qualify for FEMA funding, um, then we would put together a grant application that would include a documentation of all the expenditures that were actually incurred. So when we submit that, that documentation and that grant, hopefully we'll get a grant for that amount of money. So we've already demonstrated the money's been spent. Well, what's been happening is that money has been being placed into a reserve account, even though the expended, and, and it just sits there and it accumulates. Yet all those expenditures were basically covered with town revenues, and effectively they've been covered out of our undesignated reserves. So at this point, we just say in, uh, that in the future, when we receive these revenues from these grants, we will just recognize them as revenues in the year they receive and they will, those revenues will flow into undesignated reserves. So what we want to do now is fix the accounting that was done uh, to really recognize that those monies shouldn't be in a reserve for FEMA. They should be in undesignated reserves. So we want to move the money from A to B. Well said. Okay. Motion? Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion that we accept or recommend Adoption of Article 36 is read. Second. All in favor? All right. Okay. We are off to H32. H32 or Article 32? H32, Article 44. Um, thanks to the proofing of Mr. Will Langley, he um, pointed out that um, inadvertently somehow the winter maintenances from 22-23 got carried forward instead of the 23-24. In 22-23, you appropriated 96-811, I believe it was. Yep. Last year, or in the current year we're in, you would increase it by 30. We told them we were going to flatline them. So that number's been adjusted to the 126.811, which is what it should have been. Glad he caught that. We, um, I saw the regular number. I, I forgot that we had increased we the increase year before. It, yeah. So I was used to seeing that number. But um, it's all good, right? Yep, that's the number. It wasn't we'll... intentional. It was an oops. I'm glad you caught it. So we've added those three numbers up. They equal the 409. So we're looking for a motion to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate 409747 for District 1, District 2 winter maintenance in sand and salt stockpile. I move that we recommend the adoption of Article 44 as we All in favor? Excellent. Uh, we are now up to Article 47 that needs your attention. Uh, this one, when we visited it last year, had um, 
the word culture in it. We have clarified it to read to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate 82997 for recreational, APAT, cemetery, forestry, and conservation. So we have spelled them out, and that bottom line you see underlined um, spells out cemetery, forestry, and conservation. I like that a lot better. Yeah, it's clean up. I'm glad. I'll make a motion to uh, recommend adoption of Article 47 as written. Second. All in favor? All right, and then 48, um, we also put off because we wanted to uh, spell these out a little clearer, so I'm not going to read them, but to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate $94,880 for community service. Uh, this covers your health and welfare, your uh, library, and all of the social services. I'll make a motion that we adopt Article 48 as written. We recommend adoption of Article 48 as written. Seconded. All in favor? All right, so David and Dan is abstaining. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm abstaining. <laughs> yes, I, I got that. So <laughs> should we take another? Yeah, I'll take another vote. So all in favor, two. Okay, Opposed, I'll, zero. Dan and I are abstaining. We abstained last time. I forgot all about it. Mm -hmm. Right in the moment there. Thank you, Jennifer. They're probably not a big deal. Yes, sir. So town hall goes. Town meeting goes there quickly. Yeah. So uh, the plan from here, just to update the rest of the board, um, Warren Finance is meeting with the school committee on Thursday. They're going to vote on all of the school articles that now have been embedded into this one massive document. Um, they'll make those recommendations. At the end of the meeting, they're going to revisit probably about five of our articles, um, some that they asked for more information on, the road one that um, they don't know about yet. But um, I'm planning on scooting over there and joining them to make sure they have everything they need. So I know we have our new business D, which would per pertain to what? Yeah, I thought you might want to go back. So you want to go back to that afterwards? Yeah, if, you, okay. if that's the direction you give me, we can add a 50. Okay, well, why don't we do it right now? Okay. Why don't we um, skip E on new business? No, not E, D. Okay, okay. Um, I'll remember email. Okay, uh, it's about the um, APAT right. and why I'm bringing this up it has something to do with the warrant. Okay. Um, so, so, go ahead. So we received an email um, from Mr. Arnold Murray um, saying that upon review of the minutes of, I'm going to say January 10th of 24, I propose a review of the cable franchise fee. Around 2010, when cable was available to the residents, a fee was added to their cable bill to fund APAT. This was justified in that the people who had cable TV would be able to watch the videos recorded of Acton events or channels exclusively on 26. Now channel 26 is obsolete and has been for some time. Videos and announcements are available via the internet to anyone and whenever you want to watch them. The revenue from the cable in 21 was 35,000, 22, 33,000. I do not gain any advantage of paying 6.99 a month for a fee of products of channel 26. The proposed new system has the ability to stream live and archive recordings, which covers my requirements. My request is that the franchise fee be abolished and the total cost of APAT will be funded totally from the tax taxes as all videos are available to everyone on YouTube and you can choose when to watch. This request applies to whether we change recording systems or not. The present system penalizes certain citizens for having cable television, whereas everything on channel 26 is available for free on the internet. At a minimum, an opt-out of paying a franchise fee. The channel itself refers viewers to the town website for viewing. So after speaking to Tom, who was the liaison to the cable, uh, we reached out to Fran Bradley, who is the Director of Government Affairs. And as he indicated, Jennifer, as I explained on the phone, the franchise fee under federal law is to be the compensation for the use of the town right of ways. Federal law has capped the amount the franchise fee can apply at 5%. The town of Acton during the last renewal elected to take 4.5 in franchise fee. Under the federal law, the cable operator is to pass that franchise fee onto the billing statement. If the town elects to do so, they can decide to utilize a franchise fee payment towards the operation of the PEG channel if they want, but the main usage under federal law is for administration. The town has the option to increase or decrease the franchise fee payment up to the maximum allow of 5% or decrease it down to zero. They would need to do this through an amendment of the franchise agreement, which would need to be signed by both parties. Franchise section is discussed in section 10. So okay. those are some options for you. 
Um, I think back when this was done, uh, cable was sort of the only option for people, and that was evident by the level of revenue we were receiving from this franchise fee. It was over forty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, I recall. This year, it's down below thirty, and that's because we have a number of people that are no longer taking cable services. They're streaming or doing whatever they do. Um, so we're taxing a few mm -hmm. or a portion of our citizenry, taxing a limited number of them, and to help, it, it's going to the benefit to lower taxes. That doesn't seem fair to me, anyways. Because everybody can get the service. Everyone can get the, you know, the, the 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 streaming will all be available. We'll still have our public channel. Yeah. The public channel is not conditional upon this fee. Mm -hmm. Public channel will continue to be there. Um, personally, I would forego the revenue, and anyone who gets cable will get a what's that, a eighty-four dollar a year, a eighty-four dollar a year reduction in their cable cost. Um, personally, I think we ought to put it in a warrant and let town hall town meeting decide what they want to do. But um, you know, it would have my recommendation to eliminate. Well, that, it. That's why we brought this up. Because we were dealing with the warrant, yeah. and Tom, um, we were talking about it. Um, I, th I, th I agree with him. It makes perfectly um, good sense. Well, because the problem yeah. is, if we turn around and say no, we, yep. we, we're going to take it. You know, we're going to stop doing all that's thirty some thousand dollars a year that's going on yeah. the other side. Yeah. Okay. So I think this is. I think Tom's right. This is something the taxpayer ought to be making the end decision on. Yeah. When it when it first started, it was like. I don't know, forty-eight thousand dollars or something like that. We were getting. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's what put together the cable and well, the paid the employees it. and everything. But now, yeah, now well, we weren't being paying down under two, under thirty. Yeah, we weren't paying two hundred dollars no. a month for your cable bill either. No, exactly. <laughs> but you know, with it down under thirty, it's um, more like twenty-eight thousand. So um, what, we're, what yeah. we're talking about doing is adding a, a, an article Add a, at the article. end of, at the end there. So that's something. Yep. How are we going to work that, Jen? Next week, can we vote on that? Yep. Uh, I, I think Science. it would need to authorize the selectmen to amend whatever agreement you said was there. The cable was there franchise. They can't cable franchise agreement to uh, to lower the franchise. Or lower fee. or abolish it. Or, it's got to be or, Whatever. It just set it to zero or abolish okay. it. Whatever the lawyers want to do. And, um, and and just recognize that there will be a reduction in revenue to the town of X amount of, X amount of dollars. And... I, I, I myself would write the article to abolish. Yes, yep. or one, or, yeah. one or the other. That's fine. See, the town will instruct us. Then we'll never come back. Then we'll have to worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> right. It is what it is. So, plain yeah. Jane. So. Yeah, because we already have the right to set it yeah. at whatever level we want to. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. So okay. if you you'd actually just have to write it to abolish it, yeah, that I, take care of that. See, the town will see the town will vote to instruct the select board to abolish the franchise fee. Set by. This will be something now. No, we, we would have to have that written and off to the finance committee by the next meeting, right? Well, so they're meeting tomorrow night. Okay, so that um, doesn't but work they, over well. well, it will be all right because they also set another meeting for after the public hearing. Should they, yeah. uh, should there okay. be changes to the mooring and the floodplain? Okay. So. Oh yeah, so when we're voting I mean, on that, we could vote on that. I mean, yeah, so but so. I but I think that if I if I hear you all and you're all on the same page about the abolishing it, and Tom and I can can work on the article and have it written by tomorrow night. Happy to present pretty straight, it to them. Pretty straight I, I, I think forward. this can, think, if you want to write something up and yeah. I'll look at it. And Perfect. Maybe you get counsel to look at it. Russ, I don't know, whatever you we need. We could have it to them by tomorrow night as well. Okay. okay. Awesome. Okay. Yep. okay, so I guess we'll go back up to um, what we did there. We call uh, Freedom of Information Request, New Business. Okay, so a couple. Uh, the first one, uh, this is hello, Jennifer, in accordance with the Maine Freedom of Information Access Act. I hereby request the TD Wealth financial statements for the town of Acton for December of 2023 and January 2024. These are typically between seven and 11 pages. Thank you in advance, Phil Caruso. Uh, this one came in right after the meeting last week. I reviewed it with Tom, it's already been completed. Just an FYI to you guys, that information has been sent off. Uh, the next one came in a day or two later. Uh, hello, Jennifer, in accordance with Maine Freedom of Access, I hereby request the Partners Bank Statement Balances Only Summary for the Town of Acton related to savings and or investments, in parentheses CDs, for December of 23 and 24. Um, I replied, got a little bit of clarification. Tom answered some questions for me. I think we're good to send this off tomorrow. Good. Awesome. Okay, we all set with that. Abatements. 
You have a um, abatement denial from Map 142 <coughs> Lot 16. Uh, the assessor has reviewed the property in comparison with other sales, and he feels like they are justified at the current value of that. So you're going to need a motion here to, to sign it and deny the sign, abatement. Mm -hmm. Sign the denied abatement. Yep. And there is um, in the last paragraph, uh, there's discussion about what the property owner can do. There's a next step if they want to appeal. Yep. I'm sorry, you probably said this, but O'Donnell has looked at this. O'Donnell wrote it. They, they wrote, wrote it. it. So yeah. we're all they're all set. Okay. I'm just the middleman, Tom. So yeah. I'll, I'll make a motion. We sign the, uh, the O'Donnell's document for the abatement, the rejection of the abatement. Second it. All in favor? Yeah, I figured I'd do it so I can sign it and move it on. Uh, what's today? 28. 24. Eight. Hmm? 2024. Eight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I want to screw that one up. Uh, it's been a long day. Animal welfare. Animal welfare contract. That must be. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every year we sign it. Yeah. We sign it every year. So we have somewhere to take the donor. Right. Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> Okay, we're going to go to animal welfare contract. So every year, the uh, Animal Welfare Society in Kennebunk uh, provides us a contract. We're required under state law to provide some type of shelter for animals that your animal control officer may pick up. Um, the number, nothing has changed in this. It's, it's word for word, except for the fee calculation. Um, I've pulled the last two years, sh should you want to see them. The per capita has stayed the same. It's the population that uh, went up about 70. And when I reached out to her, she said that um, the state of Maine informed them of updated um, census numbers. It's only 70 people, so it's, it's um, I'm surprised if they got an accurate one. It didn't go up more. But this, so the fee calculation this year is based on 2,671 people oh. times a dollar 46 capita. Last year, it was a dollar forty-six capita based on twenty-six oh one. So, so the increase is what? Seventy people. Oh, the total overall thirty-eight, um, ninety-eight dollars and change. It hasn't gone up. For, up for no, a while. it hasn't. Yeah, and like I said, the the per dog per person is stays the same. It's just wonder where they got that increase on the people, but. Well, I mean, there was a census done. Well, I know, but it's just an odd number. That's not the number they gave us, but mine's much higher, so we're going to go with that. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll take the low number. Yeah. <laughs> they presented it to us. Looks good. I'll make a motion. We sign the uh, contract with Animal Welfare Society. Second. All in favor? Okay. <clears throat> We, well, we're, we're going to be making an appointment, so I'll do public comment after we come out of executive session. So, um, do I hear a motion? Can we do that now? The What's public it? comment? Uh, I wouldn't do the public comment because we're going to come on and actually make oh, a decision. Okay. So, right. um, yeah. so uh, do I hear a motion? I move that we go to an executive session 4056A1 personnel, um, treasurer position. Second. Seconded. Seconded. All in favor? Okay, we will be back. Do I hear a motion? Uh, I move that we come out of executive session 4056A1 personnel, treasure position at 727. Seconded. All in favor? Okay, so uh, we went in and we had, obviously we, our treasurer resigned on us, so we, we discussed about that. So do I hear a motion? I'll make a motion that we uh, appoint um, Lauren, I'm sorry, what's her last name? Hayes Camp. Hayes and Camp. Hayes and Camp um, as treasurer for a period of two months. May 1st. May, May, through May 1st? 
Yeah. Okay. Um, effective immediately. Seconded. All in favor? Okay. And we'll sign that up. And we have we have an appointment to make. Yeah. So uh, if we can just piggyback on that because I know some people do watch it while he's while they're signing that. The deadline for payroll and bills, I'm going to send a memo out everybody, to everybody tomorrow, is Mondays at 10. Oftentimes, we, people wait until Tuesday to put them in, thinking that nobody's here on Mondays. During then this transition period, uh, we are going to be working Mondays to be able to stay ahead while we fill these positions. So it is imperative that everybody get it in by 10 o'clock on Monday, or it will wait until the next week. We so need that time to get the job done. I would send an email to each department head and let them know that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, now we're talking about an election clerk appointment for Bevan Corbin. Yes. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Bevan Corbin as an election clerk. Seconded. All in favor? And thanks for the, all the people who volunteered to do that. Democrats and Republicans. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm enrolled. Okay. At least this is Okay, location. so let me see here, I think. Public comment. I don't see any public, unless Virginia, you want to hear any public comment tonight? No, not at all. Okay, so I guess, <laughs> I guess we're going to skip public comment. You guys, you guys got anything to say? Um, just uh, uh, last year we did a town cleanup, and I know the group has gotten together, and I believe we've pinpointed the date of April 27th, so just kind of like a save the date with more information to come out about specifics. This would be something good to be able to put on our website, right? Yep. Yeah. Community event. Community event. Make me a flyer. Okay. I'll get it on there. So I'll probably announce that every, every week or so to make sure everybody remembers. It'd be good. Hi, anybody else got anything? Anything good? Make a motion we adjourn. Okay. Second. All in favor? Good night, everybody.